Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another PC cooling news update for you here on the channel today. Now, previous videos in this series have focused on just one or two manufacturers and giving you the full download of all the releases over the previous year. Now that I've covered just about every manufacturer that I want to cover, I'm going to circle back and give you a lot more up-to-date information on more manufacturers. So I'm going to cover five manufacturers in this video and just give you their latest releases, including some things they may be releasing in the near-term future. So I'm going to start with the biggest news. This comes out of Noctua. Now, I recently did a preview of this cooler right here, the NHU-12A Chromax Black. But since then, Noctua has completely updated and revamped its roadmap for 2022. It's postponed its 140 millimeter class products and dropped in their place a blockbuster of a new product, a dual tower 120 millimeter cooler. Now, it's not named on the roadmap and I've asked Noctua for details. They would not provide any, but here's my best educated guess. This is going to be called the NHD12A Chromax Black, and I believe it's going to come in at $130. You heard it here first. This is a huge product for Noctua, and the fact that you're doing this in complete secrecy goes to show how important it is for them. They were willing to postpone their 140 millimeter class products for this 120 millimeter class product because the competition has been so stiff in the past couple of years, including from Scythe, in the form of the Fuma 2, and most recently from Deep Cool in the form of the AK620. Now, I'm going to be testing both of these up against Noctua's best 120 millimeter cooler, the U12A, in an upcoming shootout. But then Noctua is probably going to top all of these coolers with their D12A. It's going to use the same fans, of course, the A class fans. It's going to have to use two of them to be competitive with these two coolers. And in terms of pricing, I said $130 because this one's $120 and the dual tower versions inevitably going to be more expensive. They have to recoup some of that R&D cost. They've done it very quickly and they need to make money on it and they are not out to give you a value. They're not going to match the $60 of this cooler or the $75 of this cooler. All they care about is performance supremacy and that's what they're going to give you with the new NHD12A. All right, other news from Noctua, they have a new version of the L9i for the Socket 1700 from Intel. Now that's not that exciting on its own, but to spice it up a bit, Noctua has added a new accessory, the NAFD1, which is a fan duct for the L9 series, allowing you to seal off the gap between your cooler and the side panel on a small form factor chassis. So really helping to funnel the air in. They make some bold claims about the performance, but I think a lot better than that would be a taller fan or maybe a taller heatsink. And I've asked Noctua many times over the past few years why they don't fill the gap between the L9i at 37 millimeters and the L9X65 at 65 millimeters with perhaps a 47 millimeter class cooler or a 58 millimeter class cooler. And they said, there's no need for that. We've got it covered. Well, I disagree, but apparently Noctua doesn't want to put the R&D into a brand new cooler when it's really a niche market. We all realize there aren't a lot of coolers sold at those sizes, even though all of you enthusiasts in the small form factor market are interested in them. Go ahead and email Noctua and say, I don't want a new foam duct, I want a new cooler, and maybe they'll come up with one. But for now, all they have is a duct for this very tiny cooler. Okay, that's it from Noctua. Let's move on to Arctic. Arctic has a lot of new products coming out all the time, and the big new one coming out right now is the Freezer 35 ARGB cooler. Now this, of course, is equipped with the P12 ARGB fan, which I've shown in previous reviews to be an excellent performer. This is not just about the looks, but the problem for this new Freezer A35 is that it comes in at $53. This is a lot more than Arctic probably intended, and it does put it quite a bit above the Freezer 34 Esports Duo, which has dual fans. So my hunch is that this new version is gonna underperform its cheaper predecessor. Now, of course, you do get those ARGB effects, but it's going to be tough competition. There are a lot of other products coming out with ARGB fans, so we'll see how it works out. I will be testing this in a future shootout in 2022. Also coming from Arctic is a 140 millimeter version of this fan. Now, that's not officially announced, but we know it's coming because they've already announced the 280 and 420 millimeter radiators that use those fans. So they exist. They just haven't packaged them for retail quite yet, but I do believe they'll be coming at the end of November or early December. I don't have pricing on them yet, but they'll probably look a whole lot like this, except bigger. All right. That's it for Arctic. Let's go over to Scythe. Now, I've got a product here that you can't buy, at least not in the US. This is the Scythe Kazaflex 120 ARGB. 
Strangely, it's actually listed on Scythe US site. So I checked in with Scythe and said, hey, are you finally gonna be releasing this to retail? And it said, sorry, no, it's not coming to the US market. Now, you may ask, how do I have it in my hand then? I'll even read off the model number. It's KF1225FD15ARP. This really does exist and it's really on Scythe's website. Well, this has been around for a couple of years. It was actually released alongside the Mugen 5 ARGB Plus cooler, which I tested on the channel and found to be basically subpar. It was extremely expensive. It had two of these fans on it. It looked decent, actually really good, but it definitely underperformed other coolers in its price class. So, you know, Scythe is still only offering that in the US on the cooler. And it's a shame because these would make really good case fans, but sorry, you can't buy them. No, I'm not gonna test them as case fans. Do we have anything else coming from Scythe? Yes, some good news. The Mugen 5S. S, of course, stands for snail, specifically the Wonder Snail fan that it's gonna be equipped with. This is coming to the US market and worldwide at the $55 price point. It's gonna be silver, so not blacked out like the Mugen 5 Black, which was at 60 bucks, but it's gonna have a better fan. The Wonder Snail 120 is definitely better than the Cosa Flex 120 that's on that black version. So you're paying less for more performance. The only thing you don't get is the blacked out heatsink. You do get the updated mounting system from the Mugen 5 Black. So that is supposed to be easier to use and also give you a firmer fit on the heat spreader and more even pressure according to Scythe. So good stuff coming from Scythe in the near future. Let's now talk about Be Quiet. Now, I don't have any products here in front of me because this was just announced a couple of days ago. It's the Lightwings 120 and 140 coming in at $27 and $30 respectively. And you can get them in two different versions, both standard and high speed. And note that the high speed versions of these fans actually have completely different blades. Nine heavily swept blades reminiscent of the Nidex Servo Gentle Typhoon. And I'd say this is the first dedicated radio fan Be Quiet has ever released, which is great. Unfortunately, it's using an ARGB loop in the frame, which cuts down on the diameter of the blades. So my guess is that for the 120 millimeter version, the blade diameter will be about 105 millimeters versus the standard 115 millimeters. I've seen this on the Arctic versions. Arctic has a P12 and P120 ARGB, and the ARGB version of the P120 uses a loop around the frame and definitely reduces the sweep of those blades. And that means it reduces the performance. So that's gonna be a trade-off. On the other hand, the Be Quiet light wings do have light shining through the back, which is a little bit unusual and kind of a cool little touch. Shows that it's really customized for Be Quiet users. This is not a standard off-the-shelf ARGB fan. But I think these are pretty expensive and also keep in mind that they're using rifle bearings. So these are not gonna be fantastic bearings. I've tested these on the Pure Wings fans. They're pretty rough sounding. So overall, probably not gonna get a recommendation from me and I'm not intending to test these anytime soon, but they are new and for Be Quiet fans out there, you might wanna pick some up. Okay, moving on to Corsair, their brand new H150i Elite LCD. I will be reviewing this shortly on the channel. Now, of course, the big news here is that LCD screen integrated into the pump and that adds a lot to the cost. It's coming in $290, but what I'm personally more interested in is the brand new fans equipped on this cooler. They are the new ML120 RGB Elites. Now, I've asked Corsair for years to update their ML120 design. The ML120 was really good when it was released and now it's kind of run of the mill and it's really too loud at its 2400 RPM max. Now what Corsair is claiming is that the new RGB Elite versions are more powerful at 2000 RPM than the ML120s were at 2400 RPM, which would be fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to testing it out in my upcoming review. It will be great if Corsair could be really competitive again in the fan arena. So that pretty much wraps it up. Lots of new products coming, a few new reviews coming as well. If you have any questions about any of the content I've discussed here in this video, please post it down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like and subscribe and consider donating through PayPal. I do have a link in the video description that helps support all the content that I produce here on the channel. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I will catch you next time.